I, I know there's others here that are concerned about this problem, and I'm sure you've heard about it. There's a serious issue with the depth of the channel for Lahaina Harbor. And some of us are here um, just to kind of see what we can do to help, find out what can be done. Uh, it's already affected a number of boats. It's gonna, it, uh, if it doesn't get better by natural causes, it's going to get worse and eventually really shut down tourism out of Lahaina Harbor. Yeah, hi, this is a follow-up to uh, Lahaina Harbor in the entrance, and um, <clears throat> excuse me a lot, I drive one of the deep draft boats that comes and goes from Lahaina Harbor, and um, the tsunami brought sand and piled it on both sides of the channel as well as pulling sand from outside the harbor, and so it was this swell brought the sand and just stacked it in a line across the harbor, and um, I had spoken with the Coast Guard right following the tsunami because we were having difficulty getting in. And uh, we were able to just kind of keep bumping into it and uh, making a path deep enough for, for us to go through. So um, it's uh, now just the, what's happened is it's basically moved it in a, like a perfect line across the channel. So, you know, I've heard people talk about capital improvements to the harbor and I see this more as like an emergency you know, caused by a natural disaster. The same as if like the runway had been shortened at the airport, they wouldn't wait and say it's a capital improvement for the airport to make the runway so jumbo jets could once again land. As far as the brother talking about the deep draft, um, I was a victim and a survivor of the tidal wave, the, or the surge on Lanai. And our community felt the impact of the surge and what the damage it did. And then our um, main part of entry for the community was shut down for two days. And right now they're just doing the emergency repair for get the dock fixed. Now if these guys are getting hard time in Lahaina and they're gonna get stuck, then you're gonna shut down the Lanai Ferry and you're gonna stop that island. So as far as an impact or priority, that's a transportation issue right there because it's not only just the tourists, you're also dealing with the local residents of Lanai. Okay, my name is David Jung. We've been running the ferry between Molokai and Maui since 1986. This will be our 25th year anniversary. We're also the ones that provided transportation between Honolulu and Maui after September 11th. Uh, I think we've dramatically underestimated the importance of Lahaina as a transportation harbor. It used to be mandated by the DOT, and DOT unfortunately has much better funding sources than DLNR. I wish it would go back to DOT because it would eliminate a lot of our problems. But due to the tsunami, and I was in the harbor at the height of the tsunami, we had huge, probably 50 mile an hour surge. All the water that came over the reef from Mala all the way down to Lahaina, that all filled up and that harbor surge went shooting right out the channel. And it redeposited acres of sand and broken coral. This last surf episode has moved that sand even further into the channel and now we have a very dangerous situation. I have two major safety issues that I don't think can be uh, put off for six months or a year. So I'm going to read my testimony. As a longtime licensed captain since 1970 and the Maui to, and manager of the Maui to Molokai ferry system, I wish to point out two serious safety issues that require immediate attention from the Department of Land and Natural Resources. The first issue is that the recent and dramatic shoaling of the harbor channel due to the large south swell that occurred seven weeks ago. This has caused a bar to form across the harbor channel. This new bar has been measured at seven feet at low tide. Consequently, this new bar has caused numerous vessels to run aground and become stranded on it, resulting in the channel becoming blocked. Uh, the harbor channel remains blocked until a higher power tow vessel can free these vessels. Currently, we have six vessels that draw more than seven feet, some up to 10 feet deep. There are also numerous visiting vessels that also draw more than seven feet. This last Labor Day race, we had a bunch of sailboats get stuck. 
This issue requires immediate attention because vessels that become stuck in the channel during any kind of surf can be capsized, propellers and rudders will be damaged and disabled, the vessels can be pushed onto the reef, destroyed and cause environmental damage. In addition to the loss of the damage, loss or damage to the vessel, there's a greater concern of mind to the injury or loss of life to passengers and crew. Action must be taken to prevent this loss of life. In the past years, between the 1970 and 1989, dredging was performed by the state. It is time for the state to resume the duty of dredging the harbor channel. We are currently in an emergency situation and dredging cannot be delayed. So now that we're aware of it, we'll have somebody go and um, basically codify what you're telling us and then determine what the, the proper, where the proper uh, avenue is to seek remedy. Um, is there an emergency fund right now available to tomorrow jump on this? I can tell you there is not. Um, the boating special fund is something that is, um, is right at the operating levels right now, and so there's no cushion there. Um, I can tell you that we will exhaust all possibilities, but it may take a while before we can address the, the situation in the Lahaina Harbor. As I said, in the interim, we would be, well, we would be looking at creative methods, possibly you know, allowing tendering or those kinds of situations until the situation is dealt with. And we will get to the shoaling in the channel as soon as humanly possible, given um, the fact that I don't have any money in my budget right now to do that. And so there's a process that has to occur. And we understand the seriousness of the nature. We understand the safety issues. The other thing is if, if you know that there's a safety issue right now, a prudent mariner knowing that there's a sand bar there is not going to cross it and risk getting stuck. So let's work on some reasonable solutions in the interim. Let's look at ways to uh, authorize the ferrying of passengers for vessels that shouldn't go through the channel because of the physical constraints that are there because of natural resources, natural conditions. Okay, so that I offer to you as a temporary solution. So mahalo for all of your concerns and your input today.